you couldn't buy any Confederate ship models, so I had to make my own. And that's how I got started, even as, as a little boy. It's all done by hand, no machine work. Everything is made by hand. The guns, ladders, anchors, everything. Torpedo is made by hand. Uh, this is different in a number of ways. Uh, when I was talking to the museum prior to the opening of the Navy exhibit, there was an interest in uh, a model of the Shannon door for obvious reasons, and they wanted a cutaway of an ironclad. There were several key issues that came up in building this that I did not foresee. The first thing you have to do if you're building this type of ship is to lay the keel and then you make your ribs like so. So I realized very early on that I was in fact going to have to make my own plywood out of basswood and this is various thicknesses of basswood. So you make an outer core running one way, another core running the other, and then an outer core and that will give you the strength. The reason you have to do that is you have no support on this side. It's extremely tricky to build when all your support is not there. You've only got support here and here. Inside, it's a wing and a prayer <laughs> until you get decks in. Just like the real ships were made, you plank it with strips of basswood, and then the ship is actually made in, in two parts. You have between here and here, that's called your perpendiculars. To say this ship is a 150-foot class gunboat does not mean the ship was 150 feet long. It means it's that long between the perpendiculars. So what you do, you build the ship part between the perpendiculars. And none of this overhang, either on the ends or on the sides, is there. So your ship that you're working on is quite a bit smaller. You do all of that work, and then much later, then you put the rest of it on. Uh, you can buy basswood that is what they call scribed. Uh, at various thicknesses. I used an eighth of an inch which gives you about the thickness or the width of iron ironclad here. That's what it's covered with. Three by five cards are used to make gratings, used to make stacks, gun tracks, uh, even the uh, planking on the side of the lifeboats. Many times your thickness of what you're working on based on your scale is a thickness of a three by five card. You can't get wood that thin. If you could, you couldn't cut it. People always say, what's the coal made out of? And uh, the coal is made out of this. These are called seed beads. Uh, I don't know whether you remember it, but in my generation, the, the girls and what have you would make the old beaded Indian jewelry. That's what those little things are. Now, you will not recognize them in here, but uh, they're put in, uh, they're put on a form, they're then covered with glue, and then they're covered with dap to conceal the holes. And that's flecked off at random and painted at random with flat black so that you get some flat and some gloss, just as coal. You can say, well, why didn't you buy coal from a model railroad shop? Because it's not the right scale. Boy, it sure would be nice if we had some people. I don't do people, okay? I do ship models. You know, I never said I could do people. But anyway, I got thinking about that, and you know, he's right. It would be nice. But I don't do people. The first one I bought was this guy right here. Now keep in mind, this was a guy who had a hard hat on, had a work shirt with two big pockets. He had bloused pants tucked into work boots. And I figured, hmm, the little work, a little dap, cut off the top of his head and made out of wood, a uh, Confederate seaman's beret, and voila, I had a Confederate seaman. So then I go back and I buy the other figures. Some of them required more work, some of them required less work. They had a fireman, for example, who was actually a construction guy who was perfect. He's in the boiler room. Even had a shovel the same scale. The engine room was a challenge. It's a single cylinder vertical engine. 
and uh, started going through these stacks of books, which it didn't take me long to realize that this single cylinder vertical engine is rather common. And while I was there, a gentleman came by and he looked over my shoulder and he says, oh, you like, you like old steam engines? I said, no, sir, not particularly. I'm building a model and I need to know what a single vertical piston steam engine looked like. He said, well, you know, they got one on display out back. What? Yeah, came off a tugboat. This engine came off a tugboat, which probably explains why the engine served so inadequately on the Richmond. It was not meant for this ship. Anyway, so I go out there, and sure enough, there on display is this beautiful single-cylinder vertical steam engine. And that is a long version of building and putting together from, you know, information here and there, the Richmond.